And folks, we come to you from the office of Tarboro High School head football coach Jeff Craddock as we are making our stop here in Tarboro for the 2015 high school football preview here on the all-new sports show. Coach, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk with us. Not a problem. Happy to be here. Folks, uh, this year, Tarboro, last year, third round state playoffs. Uh, that is where their season ended, of things, ended there the last couple years. For most programs, hey, third round of playoffs, that's great. For Tarboro, third round of the playoffs, what the heck are we not doing right? Um, Coach, coming in this year, uh, we were talking about a little bit, you've got 32 on the roster, um, third year in 1A football. Uh, what, what, are we, what are we looking at going forward here for Tarboro? Well, the expectations at Tarboro never change, um, and they don't really come from me. I always sit down with the kids in the off season and say, hey, what, what, what do you guys want to accomplish as a team? And so – you know, their goals uh, have remained rather consistent, you know, of about trying to be the best team in the county. That's always an important goal for Tarboro, especially, you know, North Edgecombe, a great program. They have a great team. Southwest, you know, Coach Cobb over there doing a great job too. So that's always a, a big-time goal for us. That's very important. Of course, winning a conference championship is a very important goal, and then ultimately you want to try to be the best team in the state. So those are just a few of the goals that we set. And uh, – we never make excuses. We work extremely hard to try to achieve those goals, and the kids got to understand a certain level of commitment to uh, to put us in that position. So, the goals never change. The faces are, and we're faced with a lot of challenges this year. We're we're going to be the youngest team I've ever had. Um, like I said, one third of our roster is going to be sophomores. And how has it changed in 2009 when we won our first state title? We had 26 seniors on that team alone. Uh, this year with a roster of 32, that's in count, you know, including 12 sophomores. So, you know, we're losing some kids for some different reasons. Um, but once again, you know, we got some great seniors that are that are here and working extremely hard. And then we got a good junior class, and of course, uh, bringing up the young guns. And you know, uh, can they can they be great? I think they can be great. You know, it's kind of up to them. But uh, we're not great now, but we don't have to be. But uh, a lot of people can say, well, you can be young and not very good. That's a problem. I can say I think we're young, but I still think we can be very good. These kids are really good kids and football players. Coach, uh, you know, Tarber has become kind of a conveyor belt uh, the last five, six years, and that's awesome. You know, each year when you lose a star, you kind of plug somebody right in and they pick up the water and they carry it for you. Um, who are the kids who we're going to be reading about on Saturday mornings for the Tarboro Vikings this year? Um, that's a really good question, to be honest with you. I, I'm not sure who you're going to be reading about yet. I mean, I, I know we got TJ, uh, who's got a great pair of hands, and he's worked extremely hard. So you'll probably see him quite often, you know, making some catches for us. I know people will laugh at that notion of actually <laughs> us throwing it a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, we, we plan on throwing it around some to him and, and getting him these. It's going to be a good time. He's a big-time playmaker, really, on both sides of the ball. Um you know, out of the backfield, you know, we got we got some guys who can really run it. Um, and I'm excited to see who kind of starts to break away from the pack. But right now, you know, Shamar coming back as a senior, Tay Battle coming back. Um, those two should have great years. We got a young man, uh, Fuki, coming up as a sophomore. I think this kid can really be something special. He's, you know, he's working hard. Um, he's just got to work his way up. But I'd fully expect him, if he's not a starter, to push these guys to the brink and get plenty of time. And then we got three um, – fullbacks and one of them is is a transfer from uh, Rocky Mount Academy young man who's coming over Jacob and he's working extremely hard uh, he's got a chance to be really really good and then we got two sophomores Jojo and uh, um, another young man Jacoby who b both big boys but sophomores so you know none of our quarterback is a sophomore Tay I think he's gonna have you know he can have a great season so it's just a matter of kind of who grows up fast and when the lights come on who's going to who's not going to shrink from the spotlight and who's going to step it up. So um, we'll, we'll be in wait and see mode, kind of like uh, the rest of the town and, and the public. Coach, um, even in your great years, you've been hit and miss at times with the kicking game. Last year we saw some uh, some improvement in your kicking game. How's that, how's that going to look this year? Well, Dawson is back as a junior. Uh, he started for us a quarterback last year early on, and uh, he's decided this year he just wants to concentrate on kicking. So we're hoping with that, since that's going only going to be his concentration, that kicking game should be solid. I mean, you know, as long as we can block extra points and field goals, I mean, he can make them. Um, he'll be doing the punting duties also, but we still need to get some depth. I don't, don't like to have one, but if I had to pick one, obviously he's the choice. So I'm 
the way we're going to have to play this year, I'm hoping that the kicking game is going to be one of our benefits of playing field position with teams. I'm hoping he can consistently kick off into the end zone to make a team go 80 yards and we can play short field some, especially early on with our competition. So um, I think he's going to have a great year for us. That's where we want to go next, Coach. Uh, you know, we understand uh, the conference you're in, you guys over a two-year span, 10-0, and 0, you know, you've been taking care of business in conference. Uh, you made a, a real concerted effort a few seasons ago, knowing going into the 1A ranks to really beef up your non-conference schedule. So let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, why don't you give us your non-conference schedule and kind of talk about that a little bit. Well, it's a tough non-conference schedule. There ain't no question. I'd probably stack it up to any one AA program in the state. Um, but we always open up with NAS Central, and I know um, they've been down for the last couple of years, but they have you know, obviously have a change of coaches, and I know very well who's going over there now, and I know there's going to be, with his system, there's going to be you know improvement. Uh, yes, we did, <laughs> and uh, I've always had great respect for him as a coach. I know he's going to do a great job. Of course, then we go Washington. Mm -hmm. Washington wore us out last year. You know, they played for the two AA state title. They lost by six, so if my memory serves me correctly, but uh, – Coach Sawyer over there does a great job, and, and I know what they've got coming. And that's those, both of those are on the road. And with me possibly starting six sophomores, you uh, you never know how we're quite we're going to respond. But um, and then we come home against Northern Nash. Of course, you got Coach Raper doing a great job with that program. Always a physical game. The new team is Franklinton. We got Franklinton week four. Um, Roanoke Rapids. We kind of opted out, and we picked up Franklinton. I know they got a really good running back, and to tell you the truth, that's really about all I know about their program right now, but I'll know a lot come that time, obviously. And then I think it – I don't know if it can get any worse, but then week five we got Southern Nash at home, <laughs> and then week six we go to Southwest Edgecombe on the road. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I don't know who put the schedule together to go back-to-back -back <laughs> against those two teams, but that's kind of how it worked out. And then, then we have a bye, praise the Lord. And then we go into our conference. So we're going to learn a lot about ourselves. And that's what I want us to do. It's going to be big-time games, big-time crowds, and big-time atmospheres. And my hope is, you know, when we get into the playoffs and we, and we have those big-time games, that uh, we have the feeling we've been there, done that, and it'll help us in the long run. I think, you know, you said maybe a year or two after a Southern Nash game, we won't see anybody else like that. Right. And, and that's a big thing, you know, especially with a lot of sophomores. They're going to get experience that, you know – you're just not going to get against some of your in-conference teams. You're going to get the experience of playing the big teams with the big rosters, a lot of speed, a lot of depth. And, of course, hey, when you play uh, Wallace Rose Hill and James Keenan, that's exactly what you see. Well, absolutely. I mean, those guys are great. Everybody had this expectation that, oh, you're going down to one double A. You know, you're going to be playing for state titles every year. Of course, I knew differently. I mean, there's great competition down there. Now, you may not face it. Sometimes till later in the playoffs, you know, a lot of times in 2A coming out of the gate, you know, we were playing East Duplins and Edentons. I mean, you got you better have it strapped up tight quick. You know, in one double A, sometimes that first round opponent may not be very good. The second round opponent, you know, depending on how everything falls, may be okay. But when you get to that third round, for sure, you're, you're playing just against as any, any, you know, team that I've played against in 2 double A or 3. I mean, James Keenan. You know, great football. Those guys are really, really good. Wallace Rose Hill, I mean, they're all state champions, mm -hmm. and uh, they're all well coached, and they do a great job. I, I mean, so I put them up there with anybody. So I'm hopefully, you know, we've, we've stumbled against both of them. Um, Wallace Rose Hill beat us pretty good two years ago, but I thought we really played well last year. We just couldn't quite finish James Keenan, but great teams find a way to finish. We didn't, and they did. So, um, you know, it's just it is what it is. We got to keep working hard, and hopefully, our non conference prepares us for those big games later on. Coach Jeff Craig, we thank you for taking some time out for us. I know you said heading up this weekend to see Tacoby Cofield um, playing training camp for the Washington Redskins. That, that'll be awesome. I know you're going to take your, take your boy with you, and uh, oh, yeah. you say Coach Babb and his son going as well. That'll be a great trip for you guys, and uh, hopefully, you know, get to see Tacoby put some people on their butts. Uh, well, Coach, we thank you so much for taking some time out with us. And uh, as always, we look forward to seeing plenty of Tarboro football this year. And as always, we're hoping we're talking to you when the ball game's over. I do too. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, that is going to conclude our preview for the Tarboro Vikings. Let's send it back here on the all-new sports show.